it's simplest. We don't look like scoring and we don't look like keeping a clean sheet. And that's just bad news if you're going to try and win or even draw football matches. I mentioned in the video that we did immediately after the game and review, when I'm recording this directly afterwards, I did mention that I would ex I would record this video, but I expect to have to re record it because I would expect by the time this gets uploaded, David Moyes will have been sacked. I would expect that. And the, the reason I expect that, without, without the risk of me repeating myself, which I've been doing uh, for quite a few days now, that he's got no answers. He's got no answers to the questions. That much was clear. That much was evident. He's spent a little while trying to devise these tactics. These are his backup tactics. We've seen them. He had 45 minutes to have a go. And by which time? Let's be honest, Thomas Frank had completely had his number. The basics weren't there. We weren't able to pass. We weren't able to shoot. Our crossing lacked accuracy. It's one thing to be outdone and undone by a sophisticated tactical plan. A lot of these players, a lot, sorry, a lot of these managers, when they do the, their coaching badges, they work on, on shape and transition and, and, and lots, of, lots of tactical nuanced ways to enable you to score a goal to break down opposition. Uh, I, I don't know. I've never been on a coaching course myself, but I'd imagine one of the, the earliest things you'll learn is is to defend a throw in, something like that. For them to get through us twice through throw ins is, is a real damning indictment of David Moyes and the coaching uh, and the defending. Moyes will have his excuses. Excuses will be this is not the defence that he wants. And I make no apologies for going on about pace to the extent I do, because it is so abundantly clear when you see year after year players running past ours that what we need to do is when we recruit players is bring in some pace. The only pace... Look, I can't really comment on a Gerd. I've not really seen that much of him. He seemed, for a central defender, he seems to be quick enough. But the only pace that I can really think we brought in is Maxwell Cornet. We just don't see him. Even David Moyes said yesterday, I mean, I jest you not. We, he said we don't know what's going on with him. We don't know where he is at the moment. I think he might be in France seeing a specialist. Uh, he alluded to the fact he was in a gym, but he didn't say our gym. <laughs> uh, we don't. We haven't brought in any pace. And because of that, we're, we're, we're pretty damn slow. Now, being slow is one thing. That's OK. Well, it's not. But if you want to deal with that and you want to sit deep and defend deep, then you could do that. Well, we were deep for their first goal. That was nothing to do with pace. That was just being able to head the ball clear, just being able to react quickly. That was about marking. Again, some pretty fundamental stuff, reacting first to the second ball. We couldn't do any of that stuff either. I want to... <laughs> There's the problem is we're just not hard to beat anymore. We're an easy touch. We're a soft touch. Teams rock up. I was going to say at the London Stadium or when we go to their place, we are just seen as an easy three points. I said when I did the build-up with Gio that Thomas Frank had in his pre-match press conference, he was asked about David Moyes being under pressure. Thomas Frank said, I think it's ridiculous, David Moyes is under pressure. I want David, David Moyes should keep his job. I want him to keep his job. And I said at the time, of course he does. That, that's an easy, that, it's an easy three points. He's played it three times, got nine points. It is literally like taking candy from a baby. It's easy. And every time I see something happen on the football pitch, every time I see something tactical, be it the throw-in, be it the, the getting outpaced, be it the, uh, the, the doubling up in wide areas, or whatever the case may be, and then the camera pans to David Moyes, he looks like a man that hasn't got a clue what to do. The only time that there ever really seems to be any form of instruction, real instruction, is when a substitution is made. That's the only time I will ever see Kevin Nolan come out. He appears to have an iPad or, or some form of device there. I don't know what's in it. We don't get to see it, but he's giving instruction. During the game, forget it. No, there's just nothing happening there. I get the impression David Moyes just stands on that touchline with his arms crossed, wondering what, why is, what's going on? Why is this not working? At some point, it will come good. Once again, even though we were the team, at this point, we're 2-0 down, we're still Brentford that did the first two substitutions in the game. And we waited, and we waited, and we waited a little bit more. 
and then we made the Mikel Antonio substitution. That was Antonio for Emerson. The idea was for us to go 4-4-2. Four, four, it's not a partnership that works. Uh, but you know what? I guess at that point, I don't blame him for trying something. I was annoyed that he'd been stood by the touchline being inactive at this point. So I can't then be annoyed with him for trying to change something. Well, he did. He brought on Antonio. One minute later, Frank made his substitution. That's how long it takes Thomas Frank to look at what David Moyes is doing and suss it out and make the change. And then that was it. it were, until Moyes made the Suchek change, which again didn't work. Hopefully you watched the review last night. Uh, once that happened, Thomas Frank just saw out the game without any threat. Thomas Frank did it all safe in the knowledge that West Ham were not going to be able to threaten his team at all. And the double shot from Skamaka. I mentioned this in the review, was pure desperation. This was just a player saying, I, I, I've got no help. No one's going to pass me the ball. There's no tactical instruction coming from the sidelines. So I'm just going to hit it hard. That one failed. And then he did it straight away afterwards. He had a go at that. That one failed as well. But the most, I say the most, it's, it's a hard one. So I want to know what was more frustrating or depressing. Aaron Cresswell getting outpaced or Antonio, but I think it was Antonio and it was just a little spell at the end. If you just get the opportunity to watch the last, whatever it was, 60 seconds of that game. Antonio has a shot, gets blocked. He ends up wide. He tries to cross. It doesn't work. He tries to cross again. He tries four times. None of them work. You get the impression, I think it may have gone out for a goal kick in the end of it. You got the impression, had the ball have somehow come back to him, he would have tried to have crossed again. I'm not blaming him for trying to cross, but it was it, it, it was it was like a it was like a Duracell a Duracell, I was gonna say Duracell bunny. It was like a, a wind up toy just hitting a wall, hitting a wall, hitting a wall, hitting a wall. It, it was it was a crazy thing to see. Because what it demonstrated was just completely devoid of ideas. Known devoid of ideas. An inability to either find your teammate in terms of the crossing or actually maybe in terms of just laying off a little pass, an ability that anybody was going to do anything at all. The I made the comparison of Aston Villa and the positions they were making to work crosses so they could deliver the early cross. To look at us fumble and struggle to get into a position to work an early cross was, was really embarrassing. The only time it really did work where we got perhaps good positions for crossing was possibly Sue Fowl, embarrassingly. And well, I say embarrassingly, it's just a shame as to what Sue Fowl is. It's just not accurate enough with the crossing. Ironically enough, Sue Fowl's best cross of the night was with his left foot. Um, and that was the one that uh, Skamaka got the header on. He had to go back. He couldn't generate quite enough um, power with it. There's so much... And I, I, I'm sort of reluctant to go on too much here because I do feel I'm going to have to be re-recording the video and, and, and sort of David Moyes has been sacked video because I can't think that the board have looked at that and done anything uh, differently. And I don't want to pour too... Uh, would see anything differently. I don't want to pour too much into this. Bear in mind, I'm going to end up speaking about it ag again. Uh, as I don't want to talk too much about David Moyes and David Moyes' future because I think it might, if there's a video, it might get old very, very quickly. But that can't have escaped anyone's attention that the most shots was a Craig Dawson who was even resorted to having sort of a long range sort of pile driver um shot but the the most the most damning indictment of it is David Moyes doesn't know what to do. He didn't know what to do. He had no answers. And it's I, I think it's hard to see someone struggling. It's I, I want him gone. I've almost gone past the point where I'm angry towards him. I, I just I'm just looking Honestly, it's like watching somebody at the, the first early rounds of the X Factor or Britain's Got Talent, whatever it's called. You know, when they roll up and they can't sing or they can't actually do it. And that's what I saw in David Moyes. It was just somebody with an inability to change the game. He looked, he looked worn. He looked tired. His tactics, more importantly, looked worn and tired. I've spoken to a few people during the week who think that there are might be three worse teams than us. I don't want to go into it in any detail. I'm struggling to see it. 
I, I really am. I, I, I'm really interested to see some of the tired, worn cliches that people use. Um, and I, when I say people, I mean the press and the mainstream media, if you like, who are going to be saying things like, oh, West Ham are mad if they want to get rid of David Moyes and be careful what you wish for. And, you know, it's crazy. David Moyes has done great things for West Ham. He's taken them to Europe. They, they'll be throwing No, no one better than David Moyes to rescue West Ham from this. You need to see a sign, don't you? You need to see a sign that the defence is getting better. And do you know what? Maybe, but just maybe, with, with Zuma in there, if it was Zorsen, Zuma and Agurz, defence would have been better. But when is that going to get to happen? It doesn't. There's always an excuse. There's always a reason. It's not like every other team have got all the players that they want and don't have injuries. Every team has injuries. I mean, he's had more to spend than most on central defenders. He's bought Zuma for whatever it was, between 25 and 30 million. He's just bought a Gerd for 30 million as well. He's brought Tilo Kera, who, all right, I know might have cost 10 million, but he's still bought him from PSG and he's on massive wages. It's not like it, he doesn't buy defenders. He's bought plenty of them. Anyway, I'm I'm I'm, ra I'm rambling on. I've sort of lost, not the will to not the will to live. I, I just think this is, you know, in terms of this being a game, this video being a game of football, I feel like I'm in the first five minutes, and there's ninety minutes to run. And um, yeah, don't be surprised, boys and girls, if I am back today with another video because we got some news about David Moyes. I cannot think for a moment that the owners watched that and thought that it was acceptable. I wouldn't be surprised if they, as literally, as we watch this, or as this, if this video matures overnight, they are penciling, writing the obituaries at the moment and basically writing David Moyes' dear John letter for him and saying all those things. We thank David Moyes for his services, etc., etc. I'll catch up with you very soon. Thank you.